Um, ah! 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 <laughs> That's my jacket. <laughs> Well, I start rebuilding this loom on the floor, working it all out, just a plan of attack. Richard starts with a cam belt, so he takes off the rocker cupboard. Got to drain the water at the bottom. Why do we drain the water? To radiate it out. Oh, <laughs> it makes sense. <laughs> What's the condition of uh, Tina G's cam belt, Rich? Very, very warm and very stretched. You see the. Got my new camera. I'll pick yeah. it up. We probably can pick that up. You're talking about the ribs is beginning to show ribs through on the back side of the belt. Slight hazing in it as well when you look at it there. So I would say that um, the the top side of the belt wears on the on the uh, tensioner wheel. So that tensioner wheel erodes the belt as it does on the inside as well with these sprockets. But the tensioner wheels puts the most force on it. I would have thought. Just That's in the imprints of rubber on it as well. Yeah. Let's just get you this. We've got you now. So this is a tensioner wheel. Looks a good one. Um, though it's a high mileage belt, and we don't know when it was changed. So we'll make sure that when we put the new cam belt on, a stick is applied somewhere on the vehicle with the mileage written down. This, for me, could be a fifty thousand mile belt. Don't think it is. I think it's uh, about forty. So it's overdue. I think it'd be thirty thousand. It's ten thousand overdue. Naughty on Pete's behalf and lucky we caught it in time but we knew it was due for a change so it's not like we didn't know this so uh, cam cover has been taken off some radiator hoses of course to get access and then it's the usual process of cam belt swap Turn really it up. straightforward on a pinto anything else to report Slightly no, leak on, leak leak on the rocker box, but we've got valve stem seals to do, so yeah. that can be addressed. We'll just clean all the oil up as we go. So some degreaser can be applied now, I suppose. Yeah. It can start degreasing this area, so it's easy for you to work on. Yeah. I'll spray the degreaser. This is what I like to use. It's really good stuff coming up on the left of your screen now, folks. Pete's Super Degreaser. This is made by Nurture. And Richard's going to ferret out the tub for it while I apply it on. Spray liberally, the super pheromone spray. There it is. And it smells nice too. Citrus based, <coughs> water dissolvable. Doesn't attack your skin. Gets rid of the oil. Spray liberally. Lots on, plenty on. Flood the cowlings, plenty on. Flood the cowling. To get that mm. film, I'll be impressed. If they get that film, I'll be mega impressed. Flood the cowling, plenty on. I saw you got proper film buff to get that quote. That's it, plenty on. We'll have to probably give him some more clues later for that film. Someone will get it. I'll be very impressed. Flood the cowling, plenty on. Should I give him any clues? I don't know. No, no what clues. Ah. Flood the cowling, plenty on. Something's getting doused in a chemical for a particular reason, but it's in the film. It ain't degreaser that they're dousing it with. And it isn't to clean it either. They're the only clues I'm giving you. <laughs> it's a war film, that's it. That's the biggest clue. See you later. We're cleaning up. But Richard's like the best. When he gets home at night, he actually sh showers with degreaser. Need it. <laughs> two four two six eight Carling, sir. And that's not the film. That's another film. Twenty four two six eight Carling, sir. I heard about you, Carling. Two four two six eight Carling, sir. I know that's the wrong number, but <clears throat> I've heard about you, Carling. I've none of your antics here. 
It's in a bit. Where's your tool, Richard? Where's your tool? What tool? This f***ing tool! <laughs> There. Whoa, you get a blowback there. Blowback. There. Whoa. I don't like the look of that thermostat I was in, it looks very thin. Yeah. Ew, that's horrible. It's fine, yeah, that's got to come off. That's ready for corroding through that. They call to the earth. Yeah. It's better, we can hear ourselves. I think now. Well, this doesn't look good. Just shine a torch down there. Shine a light on me. Nah. That's ready to rot through that. These these can go, these thermostat housings, and I don't like that. So already already breaking down there. Yeah. So we've got a new billeted one we can find, I'm sure, in stock. Burton's do these, by the way, folks, a billeted one. Very nice. Um, no point putting in rubbish. Okay, the concourse, you can see it's billet, but I don't think it's a bad thing. New water pump's already been done on this, although it's a uh, wrong type of water pump, but it doesn't affect it. That's a viscous coupling on the front but it must have been the only pump I could get at the time and it uh, Richard got all this, the the uh, the guns in his face he got he got blowback didn't you bit of blowback I went to this party once oh, it must have been mid 80s no late 80s and they're doing that with a joint like I don't know what was going on at the time this girl's at the party <coughs> excuse me and uh, here she probably was coughing like that <coughs> like that you know <laughs> and uh, you put, you draw it in, you draw it in, then you, then you blow it to the other person's mouth. Yeah. That's what you do. Yeah. Oh no, I know what you do. You, you turn it backwards. Yeah, put it in you your turn, mouth. Turn, turn it backwards. Put then. it in your mouth and blow. Yeah, and then it comes yeah, out that way. Yeah, that's right. Oh, Give yeah. it a rocky, you get the hot rocks on the top. <laughs> 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 what we got, Rich? I'm not going back on. Yeah. Couple of pointers. Couple of pointers. Cap off, always make sure number one, which is here, on your auxiliary cam. Mmm, I remember lining these up. Uh, another fact is, around the to put the pulley on and off the timing marks, the Woodruff key always lands in line with that. That's your crank staff, you know it. Okey doke. Yeah, I never known that. I've always gone crank pulley, but, and then you got the the mountain and the yeah, moon, the moon there. which is called the mountain and the moon because the little point there is the mountain and there's a dot which they call the moon so they line exactly up that triangle folks you can just see in the middle of your screen there goes to the uh, stamping in the head <clears throat> there's a little dot in the head so that's the cam lined up always make sure your tensions tension this side and all your slot is on this side. So now yeah, unlike, unlike how I did it. So then it's a case of I know this. <laughs> <laughs> that lets it go. And there's the tension on it. Because you've had that pushed back and preloaded. Yeah. Yeah, it did cover we have covered I say there's no point no harm going over things in each video just in case people miss the other films so that's the cam belt tension so you'd lock that pulley now or, or do you give it a couple of turns then lock it no lock it first do you yeah. right. I always thought they turned it first yeah right okay cam belt's on and then we're just not done what we did have who's bleeping Oh, it's you. Oh, the hell is See you in a sec, folks. We'll put it back together. 
that's the cam belt I'm doing the loom I've just been salvaging some old bits of cable loom so I'm going to add a few extra beefy wires for the uh, electric fan and the horn so I'm on with that well I'm saving myself some money on getting the wire out of this loom so I'm wrapping it because I need I'm adding to uh, Tina's loom in terms of the electric fan future proof so not yet fitting the fan but the feed will be there also we're going to fit an inline fuse unfortunately I have to go to Mr Whatnot who's not the cheapest um, and we're going to put the inline fuse in to the feed for the headlamps relay because that loom part of the loom is not fused and you can find the relays failing um, mine's all right, but uh, the can there's a little rocker arm inside. It can ping off, and it's a bit of a fault because if it does ping off, it can internally short the relay, the headlamp relay. That's the one on the inner wing, and there's no actual fuse link, so it's direct to the battery. So you end up melting your loom. It has happened. I've seen it. So I'm going to fit that, which is going to be a 30 amp fuse in line to the feed. I'll show you where it goes in a bit. It basically goes to the wire that feeds your relay. Uh, might be able to show you now, but to keep the camera still, yeah, we can. There's your headlamp relay. This is for GXL models. There's that wire. That's straight to the battery. That if this relay fails, that's no no fused protection on that line. So cut there and put yourself a 30 amp in. Then if you can tuck that up behind your inner wing and you'll not know it's there and you've got protection but remember that you've done it in case if the fuse ever pops and you think well why is it not working all my fuses in my engine bay are right well remember you took one up on the inner wing right so that's a little tip this is the gauge of cable i'm looking for that's suitable for the electric fan that's a bit too heavy really so i'll pick this gauge that'll run the fan fine fan and the horn actually because I've got air horns on this, although they're, they're not Dixie, hair, <coughs> Dixie air horns, they're just, you know, two-tone, high-low. Principle of which is that two notes that are compatible or harmonic um, amplify and become a much bigger noise. So you get high-low together, the right frequency, I can't remember the frequency now, but there's two frequencies which are harmonic. And that's why you have high-low. Um, it creates a louder sound more than the sum of its parts if you will so one horn on its own is loud the other horn on its own is loud two on their own aren't twice as loud they're more than twice as loud if, if that if that's uh, if you follow what I mean it's sort of like more than the sum of its parts we uh, we swiftly move on from horns to getting cables out we've got a Oh well, <laughs> there's been a really long run of cable that I need. Uh, <laughs> 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 um, whoa, we've only got monster cable. Monster cable, it'll have to be to the uh, fan and the horn at the front. So it's a bit uh, bigger than uh, I was hoping there. We oh, no, wait a minute. We're saved. A brand new GXL loom destroyed. How could you? Help, I think I'm, I think I, I think I'm melting. Name the film. I think I'm melting. <laughs> I can't do that kind of voice. It's a robotic voice. I think I'm melting. We've got some here. Leave me to. Hang on. Which? Where was that? Uh, no. Uh, oh, leave me to. I got to I got to I got to read the loom. See you in a sec. Cube. I feel like I'm in Cuba. You know when they squat at the side of the road and build, <laughs> build whole cars out of big bean tins? That's what I feel like I'm. I just built a whole 58 Buick out of a big bean tin, a pair of pliers, and a couple a, of roofing sheets. A couple of roofing sheets, a soap carton box, and some eggshells. No, I've got tape upon tape upon tape. What was I doing in the 90s? I think each year I must have added another roll of tape to my wiring harness. Is it like a tree where it's, you can tell the age? Yeah, there is, you're right there. This is uh, just cable upon cable. I mean, I've been going at this for hours. <laughs> this, this is like confetti, this. No, I still I still know where near. I've got to unwrap what I've wrapped. 
what was I doing in the 90s? I tell you, I definitely drove it on rave culture. <laughs> I see, I see. What were you on? Then someone goes, what are you still on? <laughs> <laughs> what are you still on? Well, the viewers love the programme. I don't get, we're getting very popular these days. Make sure you spread the word, folks. We should have 30,000 views. Uh, subscribers by now we're still stuck on 22,000 so my new brain boxes out there must have a way of boosting our subscribers just spam the link everywhere folks spread the word and get on patreon get me some money in because i can't do this forever for nothing pa youtube pays pittance i'm hoping there's a donate button appears on patreon soon on um, youtube soon can't keep churning out this stuff for free. This is costing, this is actually consuming energy. Just the very fact that I'm unraveling this tape that has got a cost associated with it indirectly. The input of energy, the capacity to do work, you know? The definition of energy is the capacity to do work, you know? So, which is like, what the is he going on about? <laughs> well, you started the camera. <laughs> Our new tool, LED gas torch for doing his heat. We've got what it's a hey, it's USB chargeable. I don't believe it. Hey, how's that work? I think it needs gas, doesn't it? Well, how could it work? <laughs> That's not, that's not, that's not gas, that's a USB stick, look. Wow. This must be gas. How the hell can it heat up? There's no way USB can create that much energy. What? This is new technology, folks. You saw it here first. I, oops. Oh dear. I think that's the end of that, Rich. <laughs> that's going back. It's like a little piece of plastic. Unless that's like a separating thing. And that's to lock it. I don't understand how this... Oh, it's a little uh, heating element at the end. No gas needed. This channel, this channel, oh, I don't mean, This channel promotes drug use. <laughs> <laughs> it's not gas. <laughs> Come on. Okay. Uh, well, this is where I added the fuse in to protect the relay feed. Just there. So cut in to the loom. That's that power lead. And just pop this 30 amp in line in and pop it behind the inner wing slide your heat shrink over solder solder those two push them in together slide your heat shrink over and that's it we've got a new heat shrink gun i'm going to try it out we can't believe that it can work we thought it was gas as you just saw so now we've no use for that but it's i think this is yeah go look at that coil yeah so can it work i just don't see how it can but Taking its time. Are they, are they serious? It's not as quick as it. It might work for small. Oh no, it is doing it. Not getting a. Not getting heat shrinking, but a lot slower than a heat gun would do it. This may work up now. It's going. Interesting way of doing it. It's doing it. Sometimes. I must admit, I prefer the heat gun, but it would definitely work on small cable this, but it is doing that. It's a bit slower, but it is working. I've never heard of a USB heat shrink gun before. Fancy that, there you go, USB with light heat shrink gun. Isn't that a little great idea? Never heard of that, but this could be used for, for all sorts of things. Look, I do uh, me if Thomas Edwards watching I'm gonna try and do my Thomas Edward look at that in that in that great Thomas <laughs> and I mean that seriously we love your channel Thomas Edward if you've not seen him get on his channel he does train reviews but I like the way I like his accent he sort of talks and he's really enthusiastic about everything he does with, with railway trains I love railway trains too so Thomas thanks for watching my channel I watch your channel and I'm, when I'm doing your accent I am not taking the mic I'm being serious just because I've got a bit of a Lancashire accent and you've got a bit of a, a Cumbria one. His channel should have loads of subscribers. The quality that he does his work, nothing, no, only a few thousand views for 
get someone out in a tin of cat food, get a million views. It's unbelievable. Stupid songs on. Well, Sarah Cox is better than Gary Davis. We just have to listen to Gary Davis. Boring Gary Davis. Fancy himself Gary Davis. Middle of the road, Radio 2, because we can't stand the adverts anymore. They're just, they're just ramping the adverts up for Christmas, getting you ready to, to, to plump you up and pluck you for all your hard-earned cash for the things that we don't really need. You know, they even said something about... Uh, the other day was... Um, hang on. The other day was... Uh, National fridge refrigerator day. <laughs> ah, <laughs> National refrigerator day. And, 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 and what they were suggesting on the radio, they'd probably been put up to it by the appliance companies, was maybe you could should consider scrapping your fridge and getting a nice new refrigerator. As a triple A star energy rated refrigerator. Think about the planet. Think about the environment and buy yourself a new fridge on National Refrigerator Day. You've got it. And this is serious. We're not even making it up. Do you know what the energy footprint would be if you went to the, t the journey to the tip, smashing up the fridge, having to recycle it? Half of the part probably won't recycle. Then buying a new fridge and trying to recoup the money, you'll be dead before you get the money back and make one ounce of difference to this planet. Keep your old fridge and fix it. My washing machine I've had since 1992 and it's still going strong. The only thing I had to do was weld a drum up with one little tiny bit of weld. You might know a friendly welder who could fix yours if the same happened to me. My, my mum said, you need to get a new washing machine, or eight, eight kilograms. I can hardly get your duvet in there. So, well, I don't want duvets. I'm getting army blankets from the army surplus store because they're much more healthy. Duvets are unhealthy and promote wood lice. By the way, don't forget to sleep in a room below 18 degrees centigrade. Your room should not be above 18 degrees centigrade. It's not good for your health. Well, make sure you sleep with a window open. You need fresh air. Don't be staying in them, any of them hotels where you can't open the windows. If you can't, demand your money back or a room where you can open the window. Don't let them hogwash you, blind you, or, or off, try and offset you with any kind of alternative arrangement. So you better stop, don't you? <laughs> Please. Please don't do this to me. There's cables and wires everywhere. I've no idea where anything goes. Yeah, Richard's finished doing the brake pads. He's been doing brake pads. He's caught me up. I was hoping. I'd actually kept him up, but he's put lovely new brake pads on my car. He's changed the cam belt, filled it up with water, and I'm still here messing with all these wires. Ah, I'm trying to work out my high beam. I've got, I've got the quad high beam on this. So you have to do a little relay conversion to do it. There's your relay there. Um, yeah, because normally you've got four, four lights, you're in a two a high beam, you're out of two a dip only normally. But I've got dip and high beam on the outers. So you have to have a little relay that just toggles it across. And I don't want to overload because this is only designed to switch one so I've added an extra power feed into the loom, which is fused there, so that when it does toggle and you've got four high beams on, you're not overloading the circuit on that relay. So I've just added in an extra power feed and that goes to a relay. So when we hit the high beam, this becomes live. It energizes the coil of the relay, which flips this live feed across to the other H4 lamp. So normally, I'll say you don't have two pairs of wires, there's a pair for the high beam and you'd have another pair for the low. But in our case, we have three cables because it's a H4 bulb now. So it'll toggle between high and low on this lamp when that's on high. It'll toggle a relay which will flip this to high using this feed, not the feed in there. So that's what I have to do, I have to just do that. I've done it on all my other cars. For some reason on, on Tina G, I've done it slightly differently, I've done it with a freeway relay there, I'd only need a single pole relay. I don't know why I put a freeway in. I've done it slightly different, so I'm trying to remember what I did in the the, uh, the late 90s here, and decoding it, but it, I think I've sussed it now. Also, not commonly known, but there's a modification fitted. This is a diode here. Initially, that wasn't present, and I'm trying to think how this works. The customers complain about the arrangement of the lights. I'm going to have to go and do some research, but they definitely complain. I think, if I remember, remember rightly, um, 
initially if you're driving along with your dip beam lamps that's the uh, outer two obviously your sides would be on at the same time as well and you flip your high beam toggle switch I think in the old days on the early setup the the dip would go out and you'd just have high beam okay but then I think they fitted this diode which helps so that when you did drop your high beam on it kept the outer's dips on as well so you had all four albeit the outer two dipped you had all four lamps lit up I think initially on early cars it flips to just the inner two or the outer two the inner two the outer two for mine it will be all four but there'll be all four high beam so there is a difference uh, all four high beam was never a cortina option it was all four with two on dip and the middle on high or earlier with the just dip going off when it goes up to high but with my option it's all four on quad so you get quad high beam that's it that's what this is because of these lamps that have changed when you do change your bulbs you put those um, auto power lights in and it gives you the option the opportunity to have four lots of high beam that's why i'm delayed a little bit the, the 12 15 is delayed ladies and gentlemen welcome aboard this 12 15 delay 12 15 out of cortina city calling at milton Keynes. Uh, somewhere grand central southway parkway and angel up at cortina city on a wiring harness catch you in a sec i'm going to sold it right folks i thought i was done or nearly done under here but but what i found another when the camera decides to find it where are we there. another split fuel pipe what am I doing there? Bad tidings. Bad tidings. What's going on? Another. Me on the action. What you found? Oh dear. Oh dearie me. Another fuel pipe ready. Ready, ready. ready and waiting. Hang on, is that not the R6? That's the R6. Already gone. This new fuel is an eater by the looks of it. Because it wasn't long ago we did all these fuel pipes. That's a new piece that mate. A new piece and it's direct from the pump to spray all over our distributor. Whoa! And the coil. Look at ourselves a fire in the making already. Folks, you better get on the engine base and quick. The dollar bag gets sold in Central Park. I want in. If you get that film, I'll be mega impressed. Wow, we got we got trouble. There's trouble ahead. There's trouble in the yard hills, which are. You might as well do this one as well, right? And then you have to do the zip tie, that means airbox off. Yeah, you have to do a pair. And then this has got to come off anyway, isn't it? Even further down. That's to investigate. Uh, crumbly already. I mean, how many miles have we done in this since we did these clips? Not that long, ago. You know? I know it's. I can understand that it's on the curve deck, but there's no need for that. There's no need no. to hurt my feelings. That's gone. That's bad. But you'd think it'd attack it from the inside out, though that's what I don't get. Why would it just crack there? Sure, it's just not tension crack and actual rather than fuel, I don't know. It's hard to say, but it's naughty. It's naughty in that area, yeah. I mean, let's design a fuel pipe that goes straight over the coil. Yeah. Well done, Ford. Family Ford. Hmm. Bonfire in the making. Yeah, and this is this is ugly. That is very ugly. That's coming off big time. We've got a nice coil on the back, haven't we? That is ugly, ugly. Ugh. <laughs> Oof, cut that out. Let's get rid of that as well. Yeah. That's going to need a monster. Uh, well, actually, the ugliest part is the heat shrink. Uh, the heat shrink's just not... Well, it's just not... It's just not heat shrinked up right, you know. I mean, look at this. It's, 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 it's terrible. Very really terrible. Very... Really. Okay everybody, we have nearly rebuilt the loom. I now model it for you and finish off with my new superb loom handling frame, which is me. We, uh, we wear the loom to finish the loom. So I've just gone around with a loom tape. Normally Richard's been t holding this tense for me, the muscles from Brussels, ripping away, pulling on the cord, I was going to say tugging away, but uh, <laughs> we might get uh, the wrong idea. 
And here to the end, so look at that for. You like that, honey? You like that? You know, you know, honey? That's a lovely little loom, look at that. You can go out and pull trucks with it all day long and come back. Little run dead on target every time we've left. Look, there's the ballast resistor, folks. It's mounted outside of the loom, always. Unless the facelift ones had them internal. Not sure. Certainly in our cars, ballast resistor is right there. That drops the resistance, the voltage down to your coil so that you can run your 9 volt and I finish off just here now I'm going to show you a nice finishing I was say Pete's finishing school but that would be rude now then we have to look around there we are look around like that don't need the loom tape no more. This superb cloth tape by Tessa. Don't get any other make because they're the best. Two types you can do. This is the external one. It's waterproofed out. It has a nice cloth finish. It's not the fluffy cloth stuff you can get by Tessa. But this is the it's a smoother finish. Now look at this. We just finish off there on that headlamp connector. And that terminates the loom. Grabbing that elusive knife. That knife's by rows, 10 mil spanners, 13s. Where do they all go? Where do all the spanners go? There you go, you like that in our honey? Like what we've done with the place? And now if you want, you can do a bit of a boogie dance with it. <laughs> boogie around the workshop. Yeah, I think we've made enough loom to hang ourselves with there. Mm -hmm. That reminds me, put some rolling on tomorrow. Sorry, Mitch. <laughs> We ain't got time to wash. I'm going to model it. We do a little walk on the cat. Whoa. Caught. That's my jacket. <laughs> Yeah, we are finishing the loom install. The headlamps come out that way. So what's hot in here? I'm sweating here. I have to change my shirt. I'm sweating like a good I put some nice dielectric grease on uh, the plugs here, and they're now going to be offered up. There's a tip for you, folks. If you're doing a wiring loom install, too late for. What's his name? Disco Dave. Too late for you, Disco. But, you bring these into the bay first and connect them up. Don't try and connect them up from inside. Make life easy on yourself and connect them already in here. Can you see the corrosion on these? Do you like that? Do you like what we've done with the place? Can you see the corrosion on there? Have you ever marveled at its wonder, its beauty, Mr. Anderson? It's a virus, Mr. Anderson, a virus. You know what it is? There is another organism which behaves the same way. Do you know what it is? A virus, Mr. Anderson. A virus, Mr. Anderson. A virus. <laughs> I somehow feel like I've been infected with it. I can feel its stink, its smell. I've got to get out of Zion. In your head is the key. Right, let's connect these up. And shove them into bulkhead, but we've also got this, which some of our extra goody wires, electric ignition and such for. They've got to go through, and then we're, we're good to go. I'm going to tape these up to make life that little bit easier. So we're going to make a little loom here and poke it through. We'll catch you in a sec. It's another day, but it's not another dollar. Well, it is it's another dollar out of the bank to keep this fleet going. Loom is in, that's what we we're doing yesterday. And that looms in now. It's very nice actually. We've detailed that up with some loom decals. So electrical test okay decal. And a couple of the other Bradstone um, decals. Alternator is on because they are, we were suspecting that alternator. Richard arrives early in the morning. But we've got to clean up really because we've made ourselves a right old mess. And it's so easily done. Can we get some super chats in, please? Because look at my shoes. This is how bad things are getting down at Cortina City. We are 
the ravages of time. But I, I can only wear Converse shoes because of my condition. So I, because of that condition, I can only wear Converse shoes. They can be black, but they have to be normally be red. I have two pairs of everything. If I find a pair of jeans that's comfortable, I'll buy two, four, six, maybe even ten pairs because once I latch onto something, I latch onto it. Wiring harnesses all over the floor, bits of tape all over the floor, mess all over the floor, mess everywhere, and that's that's just Richard. Um, just look, just try what we're done with the place, it's the right mess. Henry's gonna be busy. But the story continues to unfold. We've gone done good with the wiring harness and everything electrical works. But Upon pulling back the carpet, there is a slight leak on this car. We can't find it with the ultrasonic leak detector, but there is a screen leak. Many Cortinas do this. And the screen leak leads to the inevitable rot. So this carpet's not been pulled back for many a year. Um, we found that it's starting to try and attack the floor. And this is how your Cortina will go. Don't tell me it won't, because it will. Oh, it's, it's mint. Oh, it's absolutely mint. <laughs> Start pulling your carpets back and tell me it's mint. Some people will ad ad adamantly defend themselves there and say, well, you know, you judge for yourself. My car is mint, but it could be. Look, there's gaping holes in, in floor. Well, they're not that bad, but I'll tell you what, le leave that a little bit longer. This is a 90s repair here that I did with a with a with um, an oxyacetylene setup when I was but a young lad and it's held out really good but that carpet and that leak does not help it slowly starts to rot away the worst type of rot on the cortina is in this area rots from the inside out why because it all the cortinas end up leaking somehow either through the bulkhead or through bad screen fits and then damp conditions with the soundproofing holding it on just attacks it it's not so much the road or the external environment here it's more that you get rot from damp in your carpets so it might be a good idea for you over the winter to pull your carpets back and just have a check and make sure you've got nothing damp pressing against this and then try and fix your screen leak if you've got one and we are trying to find techniques to do that we have got an ultrasonic tester which is good for for big holes but uh, we've still got a slight weep on this screen and over time, because Tina G at the moment is in a daily drive exposed to the elements, so it's building up a little bit of damp. Anyway, pull that back. We'll have to put some plates on. I'm hoping we can get away with just some small localised patch repair so the welder will be back out so it's not over yet. Although the good point is that it's still a nice solid car. Okay, it's not a rock box. What else? What else? What else? At the start of a day. Last week we've been on, on this all week. We've been on this all week. We've got stem seals to do. Now where's your I was going to say where's your tool Richard? It doesn't sound <laughs> right. Where's the tool that you made? Sorry. Oh the tool I made. Well I'll show them that as well. Show them that as well. There's not, not, no wrong with Allah. No wrong with Allah. That's uh, what is it? In situ rail spring compressor. Right that's, that says it all. Me tool for the thing yeah. is here. This is not the film scum with Ray Winston. Where's your tool? This in tool. I'm the daddy now. You can run A wing, but I run B wing. All spark plugs. And then the PCL on the end. Why would you do that? Is it air? Hold the valve up. Is it an air powered car now? Yeah, air powered. Right, we're going to do stem seals and a tick. Backwards. Um, it um, is going to be a tick. A, a, a trick is to put compressed air in the um, cylinder to hold the valve up with compressed air so that you can take off the stem seals without having to take the head off. You only have to take off the rocker cover and by removing spark plug one at a time, turning the engine, I presume you turn it till yeah. this valve's about to shut or is shut. Yeah. Then you, you keep it closed with the compressed air. Then you can remove is it the collets. The collets. So that if normally if you took the collets and spring off, the valve would fall into the cylinder and you'd have trouble. But this device, once it's welded, because that's not airtight yet, will help us 
to do that operation and do the stem seals because the stem seals on this car are um, old, they're tired. Where's the spark plugs out of this? We um, had a good report on these spark plugs. Condition of the engine then. Off your spark plugs. Hands off your socks and onto your spark plugs. Look. Is that the best one? Give me the best one. Is that, that, is nice. is that Biscuit Brown? Biscuit Brown. You like that in your years of mechanic -y? Lovely. So that's what you... That's what you. That's what we like, isn't it? Nice bit of biscuit. So that spark plug's in good order. This engine's running in tip-top condition. It's a beautiful engine. It's running really nice. It's looked after me over the years, over the last 30 years. We've Number been through... Number the sign of the valve stems. Yeah. A bit more sooty. Yeah. We've got to sweep up as well, haven't we? Um, <laughs> This has looked after me over the last 30 years. Been through hell and, hell and back in this car. Yeah, we have had uh, some good times together, me and Tina G. You feel that way about Tina G? Yeah, I'm talking about Tina G. Yeah, I'm talking about Tina G. We've been through hell and back. Many, many more adventures to go. We could do a getting out on the road as well because this video is beginning to feel claustrophobic in here. We've never escaped this garage for a week. We do with some road trip action, railway crossings, chippy chats and the like. Enough of that. Let's get to work and tidy up first. A tidy workshop is a tidy mind, Richard. A tidy yes, mind. Organisation, project management, deadlines, agendas, it's coping strategies, coping mechanisms. You watch out. I've got good news as well on uh, YouTube. They're phasing out the thumbs down. <laughs> hey, what the thumbs down is going to do? Are you going to go and put the thumbs down anymore, you sad, aren't you, losers? <laughs> what are they going to do? They're going to be like writhing, writhing in the wicker chairs with a bottle of whiskey and a two-bar fire and their old sad old world. We can help you. Join us. Join Cortina City Thumbs Down us. And we'll give you our, in one month, I can turn your sad thumbs down life around <coughs> with my unique package. I can turn your life around in one month for, for just no, one one down payment of forty nine ninety five and an irregular one month <laughs> direct debit of nine ninety nine. I can turn your sad thumbs down as life around. Get you out of that wicker basket chair. Get you off the alcohol onto the treadmill. Five k in the morning at six o'clock. Pete C's exercise and welding regime. Double backed with Richard helping. You know, what are you gonna do? Now you can't do your thumbs down. <laughs> Thumbs down anymore. I can't do me. Oh no, the comments get evaded by somebody else. I don't even read them. They just they just delete them automatically. So don't bother trying. But maybe I won't bother trying to do that. Dashboard is back in. Brain is scrambling. Thoughts are the neurons are firing at a million miles an hour like a a supernova. It's a pushover. Let's go. There's no uh, flammable cloths anywhere, is there? <laughs> we've got a fire on our hands. <laughs> yeah, that's looking neat. I, I don't know why I do it. don't do this more often. What happened to the days when I used to weld? Oh, well, I'm, I'm project manager these days. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a better welder as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what is it? Oh, yeah, right, he's passing it over, yeah. Pass the torch along. Yeah. <laughs> I reckon I can do it. <laughs> Which bit are we doing? This one. We'll just go down, just down the line. Yeah. Rubber mat. That's a, a rubber mat. Uh, it stops the sparks when you're grinding. Right. Not for this. Oh, well, I was going to say that's not. Yeah, conclusive. Stop the sparks going down there when I was cutting. Yeah, yeah. It's not conclusive to welding. It's a, a rubber mat. Okay. Uh, so it's just are them slits just to be filled back in now. Yeah, yeah. Because I had to dig I'll in. try then. Go on then. Blooming heck. <laughs> Pass the bat on. Yeah, I think when the Olympic Games was going through Scotland, they had that bat on. And they, they lit it on a burning Ford Focus. Right. Here we go. Here we go. 
get your stunt double out for your hands. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, it's not. Someone said to us on YouTube, hey, oh, hang on a sec, I gotta film, this is so crazy. Just make sure I don't like a, a crock of crap. It's getting harder to hide the ears these days. Someone said on YouTube uh, that I had a stunt double. He says, on any of my videos, on all my videos, then he was signing Swampy Mud. <laughs> <laughs> and then someone else said, not that same person, someone else said, uh, uh, my hands, I've got a stunt double, I don't actually weld. It's actually, if you, if you watch and freeze the frame at 23 minutes 10 seconds, you can see it's a different hand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Past the girl, Christopher. Christopher? <laughs> uh, Richard. <laughs> Christopher? That's because I'm doing Chris Bradley's. Watch out, because tonight. Uh, can I see without glasses? I think I can. Watch well, out, You've tonight. got your lens in, haven't you? Oh, yeah. It's Chris Bradley's uh, car review tonight. On you. Oh, it's going to be on you, Joe. Am I starting from the top? Wherever you want. Okay. Eyes. Here's a good mod for you to make, and it's a common fault on Mark III's, and that's these, there's a pair of earth uh, eyelets here, which corrode up. They're held in with a Phillips screw to the, to the inner wing. I like to always clean the face from time to time. This might, uh, you might go a few years before you have to do this, maybe longer, but these are due a clean up, so some, just some 60 grit there, just to get it back shiny. So the face of it, particularly the face of it. So you can get earth faults here, you can get your lights doing stuff. The first thing you'll notice is your side lights won't come on. Usually your side lights won't come on because this draw, they draw the least current and they can't sort of arc across. Your main lights will tend to arc this across. Sometimes it won't even do that. Anyway, we like to put a nut and bolt on them as opposed to the Phillips screw that's normally on there. These, these Phillips screw tends to spin out, not that one in particular, but so we're gonna nut and bolt this through. A little bit of grease on it and nut and bolt it through. Uh, there, it's just a, a better way of mounting it. So pair on both sides, keep them clean. Clean. that'll cut down a lot of your electrical faults on your lights these are the earths for the lights at the front and also for the relay the relay earth for the uh, yeah dip relay earth is also controlled from this pair of wires uh, on the other side as well so that's your light earth so keep it clean little tip for you Chris Bradley won't like this that's crazy Chris from the channel you see him from time to time appearing on my channel he loves his burger chat he likes to buy a burger then chat to put the world to rights well Richard's muscled in the muscles from Brussels has muscled in on Chris's what's usually Chris's exclusive usually a scoop from Chris as he keeps us up to date on news and we take a break from doing cars and basically put world to rights I suppose it's a bit like having that pint on a Friday after uh, scaling a 700 foot Victorian chimney this is uh, Sandwich Chat with Richard Valentini in a Fiat Panda. It's my new uh, my new idea for a, a talk show. Let's go and see what Richard is buying us. And there, uh, check out the Board of Fair. Well, here's the weapon of choice. Panda. A reliable little unit. Compact. Cheap to run. Cheap to work on. A beautiful little car. Absolutely. That's Richard's sport of fur. And he's in here getting himself a sandwich. Watch out for that sam that uh, meat cleaver. They're very dangerous. Hi. Very oh, dangerous. Hi, hey. What? What? That's the same. Yeah. I didn't know they had any Walkers Chris left. Cheese and onion and what? Um, how many cheese and onions? 
plane? You mean aircraft? <laughs> Cheese and onion. I want to get some back. There are no plane, darling. Oh yeah, I'm not walking. Oh, sea brooks. We can't have that. I've come to check out the tarts and pies. So we've got Manchester. Where's the Manchester tarts? Oh, they're back in the nightclub. Uh, oh, I've got a van vanilla slice. Look at that. Look at that. Now that's going to make people hungry on a Friday night. I could wolf that one down. Are these very large egg custards? They're lovely. What's that pie? What's that, what's that pie there? Shit one's pants. What's that pie there? <laughs> Shrimp? No, that's uh, the cake. The cake. Oh yeah, I was going to say it's trifle. Where's the Manchester tart? I just sold that. Oh, it's the only reason I came here because I fancy the Manchester tart. Uh, do you know what you call that? I love it. I do know what you do. What you call that? A bad, a bad night out. How about a shortbread? Can I have a shortbread? <laughs> no, I'm not filming you. I'm filming the cakes. I'm going to have a shortbread and dunk it. You see, that Eccles cake's too big to dunk. It's huge. Too big to dunk. So that's dunkable. Are they Christmas... Um, I just need to throw them steaks in them pants. Emily, are they Christmas trees? They, they supposed... are meant to be Christmas trees. They don't look like Christmas well, trees to me. They're slightly deformed. <laughs> so that means they're cheaper. <laughs> oh, that's, that, you know, that, that's, that's just not right. Look, there's, there's no... F that's the, what is it? It's mutated. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, Emily, have you any crab sticks? I've got that. What is it? Crab. crab. crab did you did you know that crab sticks don't contain any crab, and are now not legally allowed to sell them as crab sticks? That's right. You see, you see, you see. I noticed Kit Kat. I know, have I know some useless information. Yeah, that's why. That's what I know. <laughs> I noticed Kit Kat have changed the colour of the pack to darker red there. Yeah. Whoa, look what they've got. I'm definitely getting one of them. You bite the end off and you drink it. No, you drink it from the end. Emily? Yes? Can I have one of these orange orange drinks? No, black currant. Are you joking? No, I want one of them. That's what we used to have at school. What else should we buy? Uh, I think we better get out of the shop. I might be annoying them. The radio's just playing... Wet, wet, wet's a uh, song from Four Weddings and a Funeral. I loathe and despise, as Sheldon would say. That song, that's getting turned down. Richard, what is a city born? You see? City. I don't know what that would do. Does it make it more economical? Does it alter the gear ratio? It can't do because it's manual completely. I don't know. Look at these curious buttons. Oh, that's a headlamp adjuster there. Height adjuster. In a strange place on the dash, I've got to say. This is Richard's little little panda. Well, I hope most pandas are little. Grease and grime there from the grafting. One piece moulded. Vac moulded. Polycarbonate with a very fine velour covering over the top. LED lighting, no. Filament, tungsten of filament. Over a hundred years old, the principle behind that. Tungsten wire inside a uh, an inert gas capsule. What else have we got? Well, evidence of evidence of working with other people with grubby hands. Because the grab rail's grubby too. Hmm. Clues, clues, clues. Everybody, caught in the seat. It's all about picking up the clues. I'm looking forward to it. Here he is. Hopefully, he's got the shortbread. 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 You want a shortbread? Yeah, well? definitely to dunk in the tea. I want that Christmas shortbread, please, Rich. I did tell him. Oh yeah, he got that. See Emily play. M for mustard. M for mustard. See Emily play. The Pink Floyd smash hit from the 60s. You know, I've written into the Jeremy Vine show. I don't know if he's going to play, going to read out my email. So when, Miss, when the Wets finish, was a stupid nickname for a band, The Wets. I mean, it's just not a good nickname. Like Duran Duran, the Durannies, that's not too bad. 
But the wet, you know, it's not happening, is it? It's not a good name. It's not a good nickname for a band at all. The uh, the low winter sun confusing the lens. Has a uh, short bench contained within. Now she's bringing them out for us in a minute. Whoa! It's like a drive through diner. Pull forward slightly, let everyone see the. Uh, that car's in the way, Rich. Pull forward. You've got a clutch, you've got a gearbox. Use it. I thought the engine was running. It's not. Okie dokie. It's Emily's. See, Emily, play what you got, Rich. Hit me with it and hit me good. I'm going to the steak. Oh, steak Canadian, you can't beat it. Open and that bad onion. boy up. Show me them onions. Whoa. Whoa. Steak needs a license, that thing. It comes with a certificate. What have I got? <laughs> the same. Oh my god. There's another 5k run needed to burn this bad boy off. Christopher? <laughs> Christopher, he's in Blackpool, fit in the bathroom. Not available. Switch the radio on because we might be on. After wet, 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 I've gone. No, it's the guy who got impaled by a spike on the tractor spike. Oof, nasty. Yes, I heard. I was hearing from a friend the other day who used to help on his uncle's farm. What city? In the seventies, he dreads ah. to think what they were spraying back then. Well, yeah, I mean, the Ooh. Oh yeah. Oh. The factory blew the pieces, blew the acid all over me face. Wow. I was walking around for about a month, looked like I'd just come back from Benador, my face was all red, all burnt. <laughs> um, on just one long. occasion, <laughs> um, I had a, a toy doy t-shirt on, Jeremy, yes. and I got in a PTO shaft on the tractor, and that got ripped off oh. my back, luckily it was an old shirt. That could have killed me there and then, Jeremy. Yeah. Um, I, I had a friend lost the bottom part of his leg on a rotavator. The Whoa. rotavator got jammed up with a tree root. He left the tractor running. He never turned the power takeoff off. He mm. lifted the flap at the back, went in there, started kicking it. And it just, he dislodged it and the rotors went round. Took the bottom part of his leg off, Jeremy. Ooh. Good grief, Colin. <laughs> Thank you. Sam in Lincoln, hello. Hi Jeremy. What happened to you on a farm? Uh, 2016. Oh, shock out, eh? I got crushed in a hydraulic door at the back of a grain trailer. Oh, and I was in there drinking. And one day, yeah, I haven't got around and walked into my house kitchen with a bull. Here's my Christmas tree. Hey, no, no that's true. On for me. All oh, right, I was going to say, that's not, that's a double thickness. The bull walked in with a bull. Scott in Chips, though, says I was a team in the 90s. I recall a family. The guy would be cracking jokes with the paramedics because you know, they're that high on morphine. Mm -hmm. You'd find a bad day in Bosnia funny. It's a long time since I've seen one of these. And in this case, it's a made back with sugar free, so it'll not be the same as school. A black currant flavoured soft drink with sweetness, so obviously they're going to use a Spartame, I would have thought, and there it is, a Spartame in saccharin. Saccharin? Well, it's not got a manufacturer's codes on it. No manufacturer's called Big Time, that must be the brand. 200ml then, not quite 200ml is it there. April 22, so we're in date, recyclable plastic, a polycarbonate, probably what, half uh, 5.5 mil thickness there, fully collapsible. However, the point is this, at school, this is what we used to do, and you still do it with the new polycarbonates. What do you need incisors like a cobra? <laughs> it's not working. <laughs> this is going to end in disaster, I reckon. <laughs> No, that's what you used to do. And then oh, yeah, I swear to that. No, I must, I can and must do this. What stabbing implement is existing in this car? <laughs> Trading standards disaster. The deformed Christmas tree shortbread. 
as severed or broken, fractured in my hand before I even got it to dunk. I don't even think it will dunk. It's breaking apart. It, it, it's it's not. Sh- it's breaking to bits. It's just pastry. Something's gone wrong. <laughs> My Christmas tree shortbread. It's a disaster. <laughs> You're never far from a classic at Cortina City. And here we have down a drive. Looking clean, I've got to say. Is it on the road though? Whoa! It survived. <laughs> the tea just went for a tumble. A bluebird. Nissan Bluebird there. Well, it's keeping it clean because it's. But you're saying it's off the road. Yeah. Been there for years, did you say? Years. Let's get back to work. Scoop and hook the roll. I'll go slow. And then it just gets that perfect overlap. It's exactly how the factory would have rolled them. Like that. Got to talk loud because we get David Bowie on. Building a loom for the electric mirror, the rear view mirror, and the, the feed for Alexa. We're going to install Alexa into the car. now because David Bowie's going to copyright me. Good song, but we're going to get. Oh, look, take a look at the sailors dan- fighting on the dance floor. If I talk over it, it won't pick up YouTube. Okay, I'll do. Fighting against the lights, fighting against the lights. Alexa's around somewhere. She's hanging about. I'm going to fit an Alexa unit. Yeah. yeah, there it is. Look at this, folks. I thought, is that picking up, Richard? Is them lights? Yeah, you don't see you bad there. Is them lights blind the camera? Okay, come down here like that. That's an Alexa. It's basically a, mi- a microphone, really. It's going to mount up here, but it needs a power pack. That will then Bluetooth into my radio and my phone, which will be in the glove box. They're changing the laws, but rightly so. You can't even scroll on your phone now. Good, about time. So lock your phones away, folks. You don't need them when you've got this. Just press the button. You don't even have to do that, actually. You can wake it up by Alexa command. Or you can hit the button. They're in a very easy place, just behind the mirror. Bang! You can control everything. Sat nav. And, of course, sat nav um, voice instruction is the way to go. Don't be looking at your screen. You don't need it. Let the sat nav voice guide you. It'll also do your iTunes, not iTunes, for me it's Amazon Music, but it, it'll do everything, we'll talk you through it. But it does need a USB feed, as does my electronically dimmable rear view mirror, which isn't yet in. There isn't a switchable feed up, you've only got a permanent feed for your interior light. That's no use, that needs to be switched on your ignition here, not the light, but... So what we've got is the nylon wire. Take your mat pocket off down the bottom by your column. And feed your uh, cable up, and you'll hear it going up the A pillar. It's dead easy to do if you've got the right cable, the right nylon fishing wire. It'll come out here, chop it, then go that way, and you'll come out here. It can be done because I've just done it in less than half an hour. Okay, so that's where we are at the moment, and we're gonna we're gonna pull through. I've got the cable that that loom that I just built now should appear here quite easily. I'll see that there it is, we're in already, it's looking mega. So now I just chop and rejoin. There's no point in trying to unwrap that tape, it's that strong you won't unwrap the tape. What tape? I'll tell you what tape. It's Tessa tape, it's the best in the business. Oh. It's, it, <laughs> it, just, it just cut it off, it just blew off. I don't know, he just blew up. Where the, where the, where the bloody hell are you, Simon? <laughs> I've told you to stop that Polish chit chat and reset your compass to 0.24 degrees. Name the film. Right, okay. So, Tessa's the one. T E S A. Now, this type is the exterior type that I was showing you about earlier on. It's got a smoother finish than the normal cloth grade tape. Uh, so, we're going to get it and just. I've cut the nylon because there was no point trying to unpick it. It's that good that I can't unpick it off the roll, folks. Somehow I've lost where I was. Oh, here we are. We've got it. No, we're on. We're on. We're on. Right, so. <clears throat> well, this is just simply a case of going here and we should come out there. We'll then fit a 5 volt regulator and hide it up in the roof. And that 5 volt regulator will run Alexa's power. Alexa needs 5 volts. 
which is typically a USB power supply. When you get your cigarette lighter adapter, that is 5 volts adapter. But we're going to build our own with a little 5 volt regulator. And uh, that saves me having to fit a bulky cigarette socket up in the headline in just a nice compact 5 volt. One amp should be sufficient. I might get a 3 amp regulator. We'll see what we've got in stores. The mirror doesn't need 5 volts. That'll take a 12 feet. But now we're on the last section. Pull a bit more up so we've got plenty here. These tails will just be enough left at the bottom. I'm hoping we've just about done it. They should just land about there and this should just about make it there, which it does. So with plenty, plenty on, flood the car lanes, plenty on, plenty on. I can't believe that France has fallen. Right, can we do it? Come on, hold it, hit a snag. It is tight here because there's a metal cup which the mirror is surrounded by and that's what I'm worried about hitting. I think the tape will hit that cup at the last minute. We might be lucky. There it is, it's on it now. Yeah, that's the only downside is there, you do hit that. But the thickness of this should do it. You might struggle at the last minute, I don't know. Whoa, <laughs> we're through. Tight, but it goes. Oh, hell yeah. That's all we need there. We can pull back a bit here, give ourselves a bit more down the bottom. And that's about it. We are good to go. There, all is done and all is good. We are ready now to put a 5 volt regulator pack here. I'll just have to, there's not a lot of room to fit the 5 volt regulator pack. I tell you what, that is tight in there. You've got a lot more room when you're here. What we could do, we can drill through the separating bracket and pick up your mirror bracket there and fit the regulator behind the lamp then feed it through that way. We might do that. So a little bit of work to do as the torch so I can show you. A little bit of work to do up this end. Okay, probably better this feeding through there now rather than coming out of the mirror. The Alexa wires need to come out of the mirror, not these. So we'll just do a bit of a uh, jigging. We'll see you in a sec. Okay, with the we've got these these are nuts at the moment. They're LED bulbs, but they're too good. They're not right for this car. If they were warm whites, I'd have them in. So I'm going to order some warm whites. These have come out as cool white. These side light bulbs. So let's just flash the beams. I'll show you what we did with the lights, just so you know. Flash the beam. So that's high beam. Dip beam goes on. Dip beam goes on. Then he toggles down to high beam that's pull up that's toggle down now you can see the outer one swaps from dip to high beam when the Richard toggles see it flip over the element and that's how it should be it shouldn't be that it stays on dip and high beam otherwise you'll have two filaments running in the same uh, lamp that's why you have to toggle it with those relays and here is the mod that Ford did I've took the diode out on those two sockets if I was to put the diode back in there, when Richard dips it, this would remain on and it'd also have a high beam on at the same time, so you can't have that. If you do this conversion, you've got to take the diode out. As I said, the diode was either for European or different countries where they required the um, outer lamps to stay on upon dip or not. So anyway, that's what it does. That diode, I don't even know where it's gone now, it was on the bench. It was knocking about, but it is just a little plug-in unit can't see it, I'll show you that later anyway, with that done, we'll show you Alexa because Alexa's running then once we've shown you Alexa we're then going to do the stem seals the tool for the stem seals is knocking about, here it is Richard's drilled out a spark plug welded it, he's also RV'd it as well 
so that's going to pressurize the cylinder so that it holds the valve up when we do the stem seals if you don't do it this way you've got to take the head off to do your stem seals let's go and do Alexa and then we're done with all that and I'll also show you a great mod not a great mod but a great item off eBay that uh, I like let me just close the door the radio's off because we're sick of adverts they're, they're pummeling up the adverts folks getting us for Christmas I want some WD on that let's just see if Alexa depends on the signal Alexa does need a Wi-Fi or a data signal so if you're in an area where there's no mobile phone footage it won't work so although you can still play music it just has to be stored on your phone to do it but here's my smartphone there it's a Galaxy S20 I don't know if I've got signal I've got unlimited data and I'm, I'm, I have an Amazon account so you need at least to have an account hold that Rich I've got to type me I forgot to do my face recognition on this don't let me see type the password though <laughs> I knew I wasn't on it anyway yeah. stupid camera yeah. I need to turn that off have I got data just about probably work there, you go in the passenger side. I'm gonna get this uh, jacket off it soon gets warm in here. My grand down today, Astro Wars, look. <laughs> Can I see a crazy Chris. Okay. So we do have a different t-shirts, look. Right, turn the fan off, we don't want that one. So here at the top, let's fold the sun visors up. Oh no, that sun visor wants to tighten up, it keeps falling down. Here's our Alexa unit at the top. Basically that's a microphone, no more, no less than a microphone, but it does have a button that you can press to activate Alexa. Right, what, this is how it works. This is, is USB, uh, sorry, Bluetoothed to the radio. This is a retro radio that's been converted to play MP3. Okay, that was a separate job. You might have one of those um, retro new new re retro look radios that you can get for 20 quid off ebay 15 quid 12 quid it's ridiculous they fit in there they're not a bad solution they have usb and bluetooth as well so you can buy yourself a retro looking set as long as it's got usb and bluetooth you'll be good to go mine's homemade bluetooth so i'll press this the bluetooth device the bluetooth device is connected successfully right now that's connected to my smartphone okay now, smartphone is now connected Your to... Your mobile device has lost connection to the internet. Please try again a bit later. Right, so that's Alexa talking to my radio, telling me that there's no um, Wi-Fi or data connection. But most places there is. In fact, Rich, if you grab the phone and put it by the window, it'll probably pick it up. Stick that... Where do you get a signal on top of the crypto machine? Yeah, right. Or... Maybe your gift gap and I'm free, so... Just place that somewhere I might get a data connection I don't know if I turn my Wi-Fi off it works that's the only downside because we could probably be better off doing this on the road where we've got signal but I'll go through it anyway so that's now connected to the Alex unit if I was to now give it a voice command um, let, let's say what's the weather today um, Alexa what's the weather in London See, now she would now come up and tell me everything that I need which is not going to do it without data so say you do need unlimited data really on your, on your phone she's waiting there's no signal it's the only thing the only thing is I knew it throw me would be the data hookup so what we'll do so this makes it a good demo but it's just gonna be a pretty crap demonstration isn't it we'll wait till I've got a hookup we'll resume filming so we're gonna Turn the Wi-Fi off because what's happening at the moment? My phone's trying to connect to the Wi-Fi in the house, which is barely a signal. If I turn the Wi-Fi off, it'll then force it to use the SIM card, which has at least got a better signal than a weak Wi-Fi signal in the garage. Although I have got a Wi-Fi booster next door, but why it doesn't pick up in it? Your mobile device has lost connection yeah. to the internet. Please try again. You can see that Alexa's connected to the radio anyway. If I was to say Alexa, navigate to London City Centre. It would now give me all the commands over the stereo without having to look at anything. So you put your phone in the glove box, out of the way. You don't have to look at it, touch it, swipe it, nothing. The whole point about this is, obviously there's new mobile phone laws are coming out as well next year. So it's, it's a good time to do it. 
the whole point about it is it's full voice control and you don't even have to wake it up with Alexa you can wake it up with the wake up button here if you want or you can just say Alexa but I've got that wake up button just in very easy reach rather than down there or there the microphone's virtually in line of sight so it's a good place to put it it's got a USB power point here which switched the ignition it needs to be switched the ignition she likes to be switched off when you turn the, the car off don't connect it to a permanent uh, fit, uh, live obviously it's 5 volts it has an adapter I put my adapter in the roof here it's a 5 volt uh, USB power supply basically it's one of them cigarette socket things I've took it apart got the circuit board out put it in this very small case just slid it behind the interior light we've had to drill through to get the cables through because your aerial socket here uh, aerial socket your mirror socket here is in its own little enclosed metal casing so drill an 8 mil eight and a half mil hole just to and pull through and link through this is not Cortina this is Capri can you see this clip on the roof it's very nice the Cortina ones are just a sort of uh, horseshoe they're not very good actually they always, uh, always look I always think they look rubbish especially if you've got lots of cables coming down like I have this for a Capri it's 3d printed so it's a reproduction unit but it fits I think and looks a lot smarter in a Cortina it's Moonstone putty uh, colour same as headlining I think it looks uh, great it's off a Capri as I said but it's a reproduction 3d parts I think it was 14 quid I think it's really good and it snaps in really nice so if you've got well I'm going to be fitting a dimmable rear view mirror here so there'll be yet another cable and also I could have a dash cam so I'd have like quite a few cables attached to the front and this is a great way of having those cables exit neatly as opposed to the Cortina one which is horseshoe and you can see the wires coming out also it allows you to bunch a little bit of cable there so when you're doing your, your um, plugs you can just tuck them back in it gives you a little bit of room to do your soldering and push up so I like that it worked really well so Alexa's there we'll show you it running soon um, if I want I can turn Alexa off I just press the button I've got FM on this I've got Line I've in. got a line jack in which you won't use. Music. And then the MP3 stick which is here. So it's now reading the MP3 stick. There. And then I can fast forward the track. And I can rewind the track. So that gives me uh, control over the MP3. What we've done is we've got micro switches at the back of these buttons. They connect, they piggyback onto the back of a very small USB. 12 volt car player there's a relay that toggles the input signal I think I did cover this earlier on in the films on this last couple of series of films when we were making this I'm sh did we film this? no we didn't we didn't film this okay but you have on previous videos yeah, haven't it's, you? it's well covered on a lot of my uh, Cortina vids in fact an easy way for you to look at what we've actually done here is to go on my YouTube and look at um, I think it's MP3 Radio Build you'll find it on, the, on my channel it shows us taking the radio to bits and, and basically piggybacking in a small USB music playing system which uses the, still uses the amplifier of the radio here but it toggles the input to the amp of the radio so that the relay will toggle into the um, medium and long wave medium and uh, long wave um, tuner circuit of this so if I press this button this is now a regular tuning radio see um, so you don't ruin your radio you've still got old school sound which is great so you've still got an old school radio it's not affected it by pressing one button a relay toggles okay music and it becomes the mp3 free play it with button control and then of course by pressing usb uh, bluetooth the bluetooth the bluetooth device is connected to that's now connected to my smartphone which then connects to Alexa and you're up and running so basically nothing to see nothing to touch nothing to scroll through and distract you no reason to be looking at anything complete voice control so Pete sits in he's ready to go to a car show ready to go to Scotland Alexa navigate to there you go Alexa navigate to Glencoe Scotland but you'll never heard of Glencoe I don't think she's ever heard of Scotland to be fair one for Ali Mack <laughs> she tries to do it so because now the data's not logging she's trying to log on she can hear my voice Alexa what time is it she won't get the time there's no internet but, so 
it's it's good if you've got um, Wi-Fi or a 4G, 5G signal. It's lost connection. Yeah, that's fair enough. It can accept that you can't have everything. You know, it's relying upon data, which if you're on the motorway, you're pretty much covered. And I've never known it drop out except in this garage. It's about the only place it doesn't work. Um, but it's completely... I'll tell you what we'll do. I'll tell you what we'll do. Why not? We've spent enough time locked in this garage. We're going stir crazy. We'll go for our dinner unless you've had your dinner, Rich. Yeah. Dinner, his, his little belly will be rumbling. We'll go and get something to eat in this car. And we'll see how those springs and suspension are. And it's a good way to get you out of the garage. So it's getting a bit claustrophobic even though I'm not actually claustrophobic I don't think I am claustrophobic am I claustrophobic? You know, I have to go on one of those uh, Japanese pod hotels to find out I definitely don't like heights I'm definitely not I'm not bad on a roller coaster but do not like standing on the edge of tall buildings anyway what I'm trying to say is you might feel like we've been in this garage for too long so why don't we go out on the road in this car in fact I might get Richard to drive We've got super boosted heaters. These these heaters are so red hot. It's so cosy in this car and quiet. We've got the springs fitted. We're going to have that engine running dead quiet soon. And uh, we've got LED lamps on the on the dashboard. Proper uh, four on four thousand Kelvin lamps. So they look they look nice. They look period. They don't look stupid or ice white. I've messed in the past with different colours. I've decided that uh, the popular opinion was keep them as close to original as possible but LED because they're like a bit brighter and sharper there's lots for us to go out and test it's all nice and cosy in it the floor's been repaired there as well we've brought Gina, Tina G Dina G what is it a dinosaur? <laughs> I suppose it is really we've brought Tina G back to life back up to not quite city spec but for a daily driver it's not bad we'll um, make a decision on what we're going to do because if we start doing them stem seals now we ain't having our dinner in this car are we? So mm -hmm. maybe what time is it? It's quarter past one, I reckon. Do you reckon? We'll go out and have uh, yeah. an Eccles cake, and uh, I only want a light bite because I had a salmon bagel this morning. Yeah. Well, Richard will be hungry. You might want to see this. You've heard of me. Why does he talk so much? Because <laughs> people like it. That's why we've got a specific cult fan following. The rest of you, just switch off if you don't like it. Bye. <laughs> Hell, I think I'm melting.
Top drivers, what was your opinion on the last race? It was that rookie. <laughs> oh, and ass. now finally over to the rookie. How do you do it, Mr. Rookie? Uh, a fluke. Is that my race? You're a slug, you're too big to be a, <laughs> be a car, <laughs> car driving. You're to be a fucking car. Let's have a okay. close up of the race. Oh, it's a close up of the race. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and look rookie. at it. There, yeah. And the yellow. The rookie, the rookie might make a mistake. Where's your nurse, Sean? Just right. Oh, people don't want it. Who cares the race car. next? The scare car. Oh, I'm the biggest one. Scare car, scare car. I'll spare the yellow one. It's gone. The car is gone. Yeah. Yeah, we've got a driver's eye view now of the track. Oh, no. Hey, look at this hot race action. Oh, my lovely stars. Oh, my lovely stars. Now we're coming down the cars. The slug seems to be in the lead. It's dead. Shit. And it's slug. Over the finish line, what a victory this now. So it was third victory tonight on this track, it's turned out to be a bit of a nice. Later on we're going to try and uh, get you over to see this driver. We'll be asking a few things about the race tonight. 